You don't want to get on the wrong side of a looter. You'll find your lunch, slugger, and even your gold teeth mysteriously go missing. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy Focus 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we'll be continuing in our series on Orcs, with a focus on the Looters datasheet, and how to use these light fingered death gun toting greenskins on the tabletop. We'll take a look at their datasheet, any obvious buffs and synergies in the Orc Codex, and how I would use them myself in a game of 40k. I remember in the days before they revamped the Looters kit, the Orcs basically had an option where they could take a unit that could just literally buy in the guns of various different races such as Eldar or Space Marines. I can't say I ever played with or against said units, but I thought it was a really fun idea, along with their ability to loot various different Imperial and Xenos tanks. In the current edition, their have has changed somewhat, being entirely focused on being Death Gun toting gun turrets. In the background, the looters are the thieves and scavengers of the Orc society, and have a well-deserved reputation for pinching anything that isn't nailed down. Looters have a different sort of mindset on ownership of possessions. If you nick something fair and square, then that's rightfully yours, until whoever had it nicked, nicks it straight back. They have a grudging sort of respect for these values, but the rest of Orc society at large just sees them as a bunch of thieving scumbags. Looters are relied upon by mechs finding the bits for their latest projects, and a lot of them tend to hail from the Death Skulls clan, who have a lot of affinity with these scavenging and thieving ways. Due to being incredibly rich by Orc standards, they will usually take a whole load of teeth and the most snazzy guns that they could find, and persuade one of the clan's mechs to build them a death gun, a heavy shoulder mounted gun that might spew high explosive rounds, crackling energy bolts, or other more arcane but equally lethal projectiles over the battlefield. Sometimes these mechs or spanners will accompany them on the battlefield to see just how lethal these creations are on the field. So let's see how these death guns get on with a look at the looters datasheet. So looters are an elite's choice for Codex Orcs, they have 5 looters in the squad and they cost 17 points each, meaning that a minimum squad is still quite a hefty 85 points. They can have up to 10 more looters in the squad, making a squad size of 15 or 255 points overall. Each looter is armed with a death gun and stick bombs, and 1 in 5 of the looters may be replaced by a spanner who also costs 17 points, but he does additionally have to be armed with either a big shooter, custom mega blaster or rocket launcher for 5, 9 or 12 points respectively. In terms of profiles, they basically have the exact same profile as your standard orc boy. Movement 5, weapon skill 3+, ballistic skill 5+, strength and toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attack, leadership 6 and a 6 plus save. It's definitely worth noting that they're no more durable than an orc boy, which is definitely somewhat problematic for 17 point models. They really are a glass cannon sort of unit. But talking of those cannons, the death guns are really the make and break option of the units. They have 48 inch range, heavy d3 shots, strength 7, AP minus 1 and damage 2. But instead of rolling individually per looter for the amount of shots, you just roll 1d3 for the entire unit and every death gun in that unit gets that many shots. Particularly on a big death gun unit, this means it's a really valuable dice roll to re-roll if you do happen to get a 1. Basically if you CP re-roll that roll of a 1, you would on average be adding an extra 15 death gun shots provided you're using it on a big unit. It's helpful that the death gun is long ranged, and the strength 7, AP minus 1 and 2 damage means it's really multi-purpose. It'll chew through infantry and chew through vehicles pretty much equally. It'll struggle a little bit more with hordes than true anti-horde weapons. It won't be quite as good at toughness 8 vehicles, but there aren't really any targets in 40k that really want to be shot by a huge amount of death guns. It's a very general purpose weapon. In terms of their special rules, they have Here We Go, the Mob Rule, and Daka 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 as per standard. In particular, Daka 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 is really useful for these guys, as anything that gets them more death gun hits on the target is certainly great. The big mech has the Mechaniac special rule, where at the end of the movement phase, he can heal the vehicle for one wound, provided he's within one inch of said vehicle. So overall, looters are a very long-ranged, multi-purpose fire support unit. It must be said though, without stratagems or any other support, they don't actually have the best damage output in the world. Even a full squad for 250 points will only do about 6 wounds to your standard vehicle profile target, which isn't necessarily the strongest for the amount of points that you're paying. Fortunately, we can buff their shooting by quite a lot, as we'll see in a second. Let's talk about ways to buff the looters then. First of all, with clan choice. Naturally, as pretty much a dedicated shooting unit, looters are going to buff from the dedicated shooting clans. Namely, Bad Moons is probably the best choice in my mind for looters. Getting a reroll one all the time for them is really good. It stacks well with Daka Daka Daka, and it's basically a nice flat one-sixth increase to their damage output. 
For me though, the real reason that you want to take looters and bad moons is because of their stratagem, which is showing off, and for two command points it will basically let your bad moon unit shoot twice. This will on average give you a mighty 60 shots with your looter mob, provided it's a big unit, it gets the exploding sixes for Daka Daka, and also reroll ones from the bad moon trait itself. It's really not a bad little combo. Now on average you're doing more like 14 wounds to your standard toughness 7 vehicle from a really long way away, although it will eat 2 command points per turn. Other good options are Death Skulls, getting an extra hit and wound reroll per turn is really handy for looters in general, and also their Wrecker's Stratagem is great against vehicles, allowing you to reroll the wound roll. Their Psychic Power is pretty decent with looters as well, getting an extra AP minus 1 on a given target certainly does them no harm at all. Freebooters could be another good one for ranged shooting buffs. If you can trigger their competitive streak and get them to hit on fours, then that's a flat 50% damage boost to the unit. Maybe if you have a few mech guns and hopefully they can manage to down something before the looters shoot that phase. For me, the rest are a bit more situational. Blood Axe Tactics will give them a little bit of extra cover if they're not in cover themselves, and also the potential to fall back and shoot if they were engaged, although honestly neither of these are super helpful to the looters. Snakebike 6 plus feel no pain is a minor durability buff, but is so weak that it's just really not going to come into effect all that much, and unfortunately evil sons and goths don't do all that much for the looter squad. In terms of character support, potentially a big mech with a custom force field could help keep them alive a little bit longer, although it might be better to go down the grot shield route for protection if you are running a decent amount of looters in a big squad. A weird boy on standby with the jump to get a decent line of sight for the looters is always handy, particularly as you can combine this with more Daka, which will still have them hitting on their standard fives even after the jump. War bosses are probably best used to try and keep their morale up, if you can't get them by a bigger boy's squad to make them more fearless. You could also think about transporting your looters if you wanted to, potentially buying them either a battle wagon or a truck pillbox, just as an extra line of defence between the enemy's guns and your looters. I feel that both of them are just a little bit unfortunate, seeing as you would really want to be moving around a fair bit, which doesn't synergize amazingly with the looters' guns, but to create a durable stream between the enemy and the looters, it's not the worst idea in the world, particularly if you give that battle wagon the fortress upgrade to get a 3 plus save and a 5 plus invul. Next we come on to stratagems, and we've already mentioned a few. Unfortunately Games Workshop FAQ'd it so they can no longer mob up, which was often a favoured strategy of competitive players, adding a 10-man unit of looters to another 15-man unit of looters, and then pop off all the stratagems there, getting an obscene amount of shooting. Unfortunately they changed that to just be boys rather than looters as well, so it's now no longer possible. We mentioned it before, but Grot Shield is perhaps one of the most reliable ways to keep your looters safe, Provided you have a big meaty unit of Gretchen in front of them, this means that they can tank incoming fire on a 2+, plus and hopefully keep the majority of the units alive and well and shooting. Really not a bad buy for 1 command point. Next we have Loot It for 1 command point, and basically if a vehicle was destroyed within 3 inches of the unit, then they can gain plus 1 to their saves for the rest of the battle, and it's particularly a little bit more viable on looters, because for looters, when you use the stratagem, on a 4+, plus, the command point you spent is refunded. Next we have more Daka, that's the 2 command point one to allow Daka 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 to proxy on a 5 or 6. As we said, it's great for if you're moving your looters, or if they're going to be shooting at something that's got a minus 1 to hit, such as an Eldar Flyer or something, to make sure there's no escape from the death guns. Next we have Teleporter for 2 CP. Typically I think that looters are generally going to be wanting to start somewhere on the table, somewhere where you can protect them from enemy fire, but sometimes a Teleporter might not be a bad idea if you do absolutely need them off the table, and then to come in for a full broadside of shooting turn 2. It's quite expensive, as you'd likely need to use more Daka as well to keep them accurate that turn, but there's something very scary about an enormous unit of 48 inch range weapons that can teleport down and then hit pretty much exactly what it wants that turn. We've already mentioned 2 CPs for showing off for the bad moons, and the 2 command point wreckers won from death skulls, both of which are excellent on looters. Finally, from Saga of the Beast, we have a 1 command point or 2 command point stratagem that's called Clever Spanner. I already talked about this when we reviewed the book, but it's 1 command point if there are 9 looters or less, and it's 2 if there are 10 or more. Basically, if the unit contains 1 or more spanners, you can roll 1 additional dice when determining the number of shots fired by the looters, and then discard the lowest result. This is a way of keeping them a little bit more reliable, and making sure they do fire as anticipated but on a big unit it's very expensive at 2 command points, and on a small unit it's 1 CP, but of course you're affecting less models. Personally I think I'd come down on just re-rolling the number of shots with a command point if it actually comes to it, as provided you're doing it on a big unit, you'd have to do that 2 times throughout the game to even just break even on the clever spanner stratagem. 
so I'm personally not the biggest fan unfortunately, particularly as it stops you from taking a def gun by taking a spanner with an expensive gun. So how would I run looters on the tabletop? As you might have guessed, I'm really not the biggest fan of spanners in the unit. It's the fact that they're 17 points as well as having to buy another expensive gun, none of which are massively efficient for the points cost, and the custom Mega Blaster, while fun, might just kill you as well. I'd be most tempted to if there was a vehicle nearby that I thought they could reliably heal each turn, but even then it is a bit painful paying full price for a model and not getting the death gun shots out of it. I would personally be most tempted to take a full unit of 15 looters on the table, and typically my preferred way of protecting them would be via Grot Shields, so I'd take another big unit of Gretchen alongside them. I'd want to take them in Bad Moons ideally, though Death Skulls would be a close second, and then just stack them with stratagems and buffs, namely their showing off stratagem and more Daka, and just use them to delete a key threat each turn. Ideally they want to be deployed somewhere fairly far back, ideally to outrange the opponent's guns if they can, depending on what guns you're facing. Looters, as we said, are very fragile point for point, so they absolutely need the protection of Grot Shields, and if you don't have to trigger it, then that's a command point saved, so they generally want to be staying at arm's length from the enemy. Would want to make sure that there's no way that the enemy can get into close combat, or to jump around the looters and the Grot Shields to target them from behind. From there, we'd be wanting to try and use the Death Guns to mow down the enemy's most pressing threat each turn. In particular, they're going to be very efficient as anything that's toughness 6 and has a low armor save, Dark Eldar vehicles and the like are absolutely prime targets, though as we said at the start of the video, there's very little that wants to be hit by strength 7 autocannon type fire. When coming to shoot the death guns, I'd be strongly considering re-rolling a number of shots of 1, as it can give you a significant boost to your firepower. If you have weird boys nearby and aren't using the jump for something else, it could potentially be a game winning move to shunt them across at the table and get lines of sight that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get. In general they're nowhere near as valuable in close combat as they are at ranged, but they are still orcs, they will still hit the enemy very hard if they charge in, so if you have an isolated unit of enemy troops it might well be worth the charge to clear them. Again if you have a weird boy handy you could always potentially jump them out of combat, which doesn't count as falling back, so they'll still be able to fire. Looters behind crotch shields could be a very frustrating and hard to remove threat for your opponent, and threaten people in a similar sort of way to how Tau do, basically having a moderately powerful firepower source that's almost immune to enemy fire behind a layer of protection. I feel that the looters are a decently competitive unit in the orc army, though to actually get the most out of them I do feel they need to be stacked by stratagems, which is often the case with orc shooting it seems, otherwise they're just a little bit underwhelming point for point. So let me know your thoughts and opinions on the looters then, particularly if you've had any chance to use them in game, and your thoughts on that new clever spanner stratagem. If you'd like to see more orc content, then feel free to subscribe to Orspet Tactics, we have new videos coming out every few days for the orcs. Finally, if you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon page, and you'll find the link down in the description below. Patreons get to see some of the channel's videos early, I have regular polls to determine what sort of videos and what sort of content's coming next, and most importantly, you can have your name on the end of the video, like all of these nice people here. A massive thank you to my Patreons, I wouldn't be able to do the channel without you guys. Thanks very much for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.